world and welcome back to Factorio. This episode is a little bit different to the ones you've seen previously. I'm not actually recording this voiceover live as I'm playing it. Now, I, I recorded gameplay without microphone, unintentionally. So this is kind of a voiceover of, watching, of me watching it back. Yeah, I know, I'm watching this in time with you. Well, yeah, man, no, it's, it's amazing. So what exactly am I up to? Well, damned if I can remember. Um, I'm kind of sorting out splitters and stuff, and I, I went in with a specific goal for things to do, and I know early on I completely forgot what I was trying to do, so I just winged it for a little while. And you see me checking the power production now. Uh, wow, look at all them robots go. It's, uh, I mean, y you can see the, the power is all over the place. I mean, especially now I've got night vision goggles, so I can see at night. So I, I know instantly when the screen goes green, night is here. So the power should switch over from uh, the solar power to the... To the accumulators, right? Which you, you see it do here. Look, I mean, look at that. That is quite up and down and all over the place. And it, it's great as long as the power needs are being met, and they seem to be. They seem to be. Uh, you know, it's it's, it's just. And I'm, I'm I'm checking out production and everything, just seeing what's going on. Um, I, I forgot that I'd actually built the power armor, and then I noticed that I had the shield, so I went and equipped them. So that's that's my power armor Mark II, fully equipped with a shit ton of shields and kinds of interesting stuff. I, I now feel I might be invincible in this game. Well, obviously not invincible. There'll always be something that can kill you, but... You know, th th things have progressed really, really well. Ooh. Oh, drink of choice today, Coca-Cola. Yeah, so I'm running around, and... I realise a little way in that I actually intended to build some uh, railway extensions. I think it was when I actually saw the railway that I realised... Uh, wow, I want to get to the rocket silo, which means I'm going to need a shit ton of concrete. Okay, I'm going to need a crap ton of concrete. And to get the concrete, I'm going to need stone, brick, iron ore, and water. Now, you will notice that I make a pretty fundamental mistake in getting things set up. Um, what do I do wrong? Well, I end up... Well, you'll see as I play, but I end up getting stone instead of stone, brick. I, f I completely forget to incorporate the furnaces in this. I know, spoilers, ruining it, ruining it for you. Um... I do notice it, but not until the end. Uh, I don't even notice it in this video, it's just after I've closed it down, it occurred to me. It just occurred to me, just shit's foul. You, you, you forgot what you're supposed to do. I mean, I, I'm also finding little mistakes like this, things that I forgot to power. I mean, it's not like that that particular mine could do much. That belt is chock-a-block. You know, absolutely chock-a-block. But I do go around looking for things. Um, I need to create a better way, I mean... <sighs> This is an absolute mess. I need to create a better way of getting through and around my base. You know? That would be, uh... That'd be something worthwhile doing, don't you think? Save so you running around everything, just planning better. Nah, planning isn't my strong suit. So yes, I'm going to need engines to make a car. Because I need a car to go scouting for the resources I need. I know that up at the top right, you might see it just coming into the map now. There's, there's stone, there's coal, and there's iron ore. Three things that will be essential. Because I'm, I'm going to have trains bringing this stuff down, okay? The, these resources are not easily tapped from what I've currently got. They're a little bit all over the place, and as you can see, my base is chock-a-block. Absolutely crammed with belts going this way and that. I don't think I can effectively get it through, so the best way to do it is have a train bringing all the stuff down, all the raw materials, have them, have them process it within my walls, do all that there. So it's essentially just a supply chain bringing it in. So yeah, I'm 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 heading around the forest, you know. I know I'm I'm heading up to that where all that uh, stone is. I, as I say, I forget to turn it into actual bricks, so that that's something that'll be for the next episode, which I'm hoping I'll remember to do live. You know, well maybe, maybe I, I don't mean live. I'm hoping I remember to record the voice as I'm playing the game. Is what I mean. So you know, see, see, seeing the things that I need, I need electric mining drills. Um, one thing I still need to do is. Uh, the furnaces, obviously. Is it... It also requires a lot of materials to create the track in the first place. Now, I do have a lot of uh, the stuff I would need on me. I need to clear this, obviously, to get the resources. But you, need, you need stone, excuse me, for the track. I mean, that's for, like, the hard car that goes under the sleepers. I don't know if it is. It, in, a, in a road, the stuff that you put under the tarmac is called hard car. I don't know if it's called the same on a railway. I mean, if you, if you, you know... For sure, if you can answer that question for me, please, please let me know. You know, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm very fond of the railways. I always have been. You know, like, like any, any child. I, I loved, I loved trains. Still do. 
I mean, admittedly, now I spend more time around buses, but I loved trains. I love cars and I love buses as well, but I, I absolutely adored trains. I know the various components of the track, but I don't know what you call the uh, level bed of gravel that they create underneath it. I mean, I know what it's for. Right? It, it, it absorbs the impact so that, you know, you don't damage your sleepers and it's, it creates essentially a level, flexible bed for the train when it's going over. But I don't know what it's called. Maybe it's just called gravel. Mm. Oh. Mm. Roads have a layer like that underneath them. And obviously the thicker it is, the more weight they can take. Um, and that's called hardcore. Oops, crashing into things. I'm, I'm not very good at driving in Factorio. You might have noticed that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I came up here to build a... Well, to create a blueprint of the railway station, because this train station is going to be pretty much standard, as you can see. I've got the thing that fills the train with coal, and I've got the thing that fills the cargo. Now, I can extend the cargo thing backwards along the line if need be. I mean, I don't need to with the oil, because it takes so long to fill it up. Right? It takes that long to fill... I mean, unloading would be fine, but to fill it up, it takes that long to fill the barrels, because the oil production is so low. It's just pointless. So just the one carriage suffices. You can have huge trains in Factorio, but that ended up turning into Transport Tycoon. There we go. I've got the template I needed. I'm heading back now. I need to find an, an effective place to put the railway line. Okay? Now, as you'll find out, I, I make a, a bit of a mistake in the initial uh, placement of this. If, if I do it now, am I going to continue building things? I can't remember the order I did it in, but yeah, I think I grabbed the template. Yeah, I'm going to grab the template and I'm going to place the station, okay? And I'm going to put it there. Come on. Come on, Sval, place it. God, I, I, I was so slow. Yeah, there. Now, that looks like there's enough room between that and the mainline track. But as it turns out, the loop isn't quite big enough. I need to turn all that around because uh, I'm going to have the materials fed in that way. Uh, well, that, that, that because... The template's the same whether it's loading or unloading. The only difference between loading and an unloading... Well, I, I want to say dock, but station? I don't know. The only difference between the loading and an unloading uh, thing of inserters is the direction in which they're facing. So you can use the same template, the same blueprint, over and over again. You just need to remember to rotate things. Otherwise, you're trying to empty an already empty train. And obviously, that won't work. That will upset your procedures a little bit. Now, I don't need to go nuts with production. I mean, t to create the... Uh, to create the concrete, what was it? What was the ingredients list? Was it like uh, one iron, five stone, one water? So one, one to five. So I need more stone than anything else. I don't need to go nuts with the coal either because the train trains don't actually use a whole lot of coal when you look at it. I mean, they can store 150 in their uh, fuel reserves, um, but it, it, they don't burn through it particularly fast. So I, I would have plenty of time these two uh, electric drills to drop all the coal that train will ever need. All it will ever need. Yeah, so it's just a case of placing down the initial batch, and I have a lot of wood on me. I mean, yes, I did just harvest all those trees from that thing, but it's amazing how much wood you get from these trees. Certainly not a one-to-one -one relationship, right? And that needs to be there. Now, uh, that's now you place tracks on. And then this is where I find out that I've goofed a little bit. Watch how close it gets. Look at that. Look at that, one out, one out. Now I spent a little bit of time trying to think about this and how it will work. I'm going to try a couple of different ways of resolving this problem. In the end, well, you see what I'll do in the end because it'll happen shortly. Maybe not as quickly as I think, but... Yeah, we, 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 all the way home. We really... So there you go, Sval. Insanity, repeating the same thing and expecting a different result. Now, obviously you would need the track to do that in order to uh, get it to line up properly and connect like that, okay? Now that would work, you'd need to signal control that particular uh, crossroad so the trains didn't collide with each other, although I've noticed when trains collide they don't necessarily destroy themselves, see I'm not happy with that so I'm getting rid of it. Um, trains can crash into each other full force and from what I've seen they only take minor damage and when you've got Construction robots on, you know, yeah, that, 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 is, that is not a good waste file. You'll, you'll find that this is not going to work either. But yeah, when you've got construction robots on you with repair packs, it doesn't matter how hard you crash into things. As long as you don't kill yourself or destroy it completely, 
Well, even if you destroy it completely, if you've got the components with you, the repair robots will fix it. Or the construction robots will replace it instantly. But when it comes to repairing the vehicles I'm in, they're fantastic. I've crashed this car, as you saw, into a bunch of trees, and I'll, pro I'll do it again before the end of this episode, by the way. I will crash quite badly into lots of trees. And I say badly, I mean, with, you know, some force. Some force. So, yes, you can see I've come, I've come to a decision about how I'm going to organise this track. It'll be like that. Um, which means I need to rethink this junction because I don't want this junction to be like this. Okay, it, it just doesn't need to be. I don't need tracks that. I, mean, I might. I, I've, I've knowing how this turns out, you guys won't know yet because you obviously haven't watched it at, at this point. Uh, I do have plans to improve this because I noticed a slight error in the way I'd laid down my signals that meant the track wasn't functioning as intended for the oil train. Um, now, I, I like creating two lines and putting the tracks on there so that each line runs in a specific direction. It just allows you for more capacity. Because then you can create lots of little blocks down. I mean, if you don't know how train things work, the, the gap between two signals is a block. And the reason that railways remain safe is because only train one train can enter one block at any one given time. That's how you prevent collisions. And you can have more effective blocks down a length of track if they're all in the same direction, if you don't have them crossing over each other and shit, which is why two tracks are more efficient than one. I mean, it seems somewhat self-evident, but you would be surprised. Um, and basically, you could end up having as many trains on the tr running on the track as there are blocks. I mean, as, lo as long as the blocks don't sort of... As long as they're one-way blocks and you've got two... Lines of track all the way between two stations or two points of station. Look at this, I'm just deforesting the world. You know, as long as you do that, you can have as many trains as there are blocks and you won't face any problems. Obviously, the system's going to work better if there's fewer trains. I mean, I think that it actually works out that you need the number of trains to the number of blocks to be one train less than the total number of blocks because obviously the stations at either end might end up being bi directional. Um, in this case, they're not, I put them on loops. So you could have exactly as many trains. There's blocks, although you always need an empty block for a train to move into, so I suppose the first statement remains true. But now I'm rambling. Anyway, as, as long as there is somewhere for the trains to go, yeah, it's, it's always going to be trains minus, well, number of blocks minus one, isn't it, for trains, yeah. As long as there's somewhere for a train to go, the trains will keep moving and they will not enter an occupied block. That, that, that's just the way signals work. That's why train, as long as a train doesn't pass a signal at danger, you're fine, you know, there's going to be no incidents. And you can really take advantage of that in games like Factorio because it means that you don't need a unique line for each resource that's been brought in. You can just have these lines branch back onto it. And it'll work beautifully. And that, that saves resources as well because if you had one dedicated line coming in for everything, obviously you can see where the problem would be. That, that's why you create sort of one destination with several stations on it. Which is what I'm going to do down at the far end. You will see, I mean, I do need more track. I do not have the resources for the track, so that's why I'm getting in my car. I need to go get them. I also need to place the power, because there's no power to this area yet. Um, it amazes me still just how far these large poles can transmit power. It really does. Oh, crap. There you go. Me crashing into everything. I, I love trains. I love that trains are a thing in Factorio. I mean, it, as you could tell from the fun I was having on... Um, Transport Tycoon. Even if trains aren't the most efficient way of doing it, I will try and use trains because I just love the mechanics of the railway. I just love the way it works. And I'm, I'm, I'm weird like that. I am. I am. I admit it. But at the same time, we all have our little particular facets of a game that we like the most, don't we? Like, let's be honest. If you're playing this game, there are certain things you love. I love the conveyor belts, and I love the trains. Maybe you like the crafting. Maybe you like the little robots going about on their busy business. Busy business. But, you know, it, it, there's always... I mean, I'm sure most of us can agree with this. There's always one particular aspect of a game that stands out most for you. Whatever the game is, there's one particular thing about it that you would go out of your way to do because that particular thing is the thing you enjoy doing most. There are far more efficient ways for me to set up this factory. I could do it all with robots, get rid of all the conveyor belts and have a shit ton of empty space. But I just love the way this factory ties itself in knots. I really do. I mean, it makes things more complicated. 
wow, look all the robots, and often a lot less efficient. But the advantage is the belts don't use any power. I would need a lot more robots, and I would need to generate a lot more electricity. As you can see, the accumulators are charging again. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've seen people sit down and play this game, and their main concern has been space saving, efficiency, effectiveness, basically optimizing their design. Now, this design is pretty much as inefficient as it gets, but I love it. I, 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 just, I, just, I, I, I don't play games to be the best at them. I, I mean, it's going to sound weird. I mean, I play games to win, but I don't. Oh, that's, that's one way to deal with trees. How long does it take to have bullets take down a tree? Yeah, I play games for fun, okay? Fun doesn't necessarily mean doing things in the best way according to the game mechanics. Now, yeah, yeah, I'm... It can be fun to figure out the best way to do things. You know, that can be part of the challenge. But at this point, I mean, I'm, I'm fairly new to Factorio. But this is just me messing around, you know. I mean, if I was trying to set myself a challenge of creating the most effective factory, yeah, I might, I might consider. I might consider the ways to optimise all of this shit. Because there's definitely a better way to optimise the way all the raw resources are coming in. Yeah, I mean, my factory would be a lot bigger if I was doing that. I would have various different sources of resources. Sources of resources. And I would have them all feed into the same place. They would all end up going to the same furnaces. And those furnaces would feed everything else. Now, that means you would create blocks of similar production. That's the way mass production works, you know. That's why it's mass production. But it's not necessary, you know? I mean, if, if you're playing this game to be the best in that regard, yeah, absolutely. You know, you do what, whatever you want to do. I'm not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that's not the way I'm trying to do it here. As you can tell, I mean, <laughs> if, if even an untrained eye could see, this is a messed up thing. But, you know, it's... it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's just... It is what it is, you know, for lack of a better phrase. And I, I do struggle sometimes with the placement of track as well, because sometimes it looks like it's connected, and it hasn't. It's funny, driving around in a car placing track. Right, so, the, the, these things that I'm doing now, they're essentially passing places, so I can have trains running without interrupting each other. This, this is what I mean, if, if I had created two lines all the way along, which I might do at later date, it depends how many trains I try to get running on this system. This system will be more than adequate. For anything up to maybe half a dozen trains. Once I've got signals all the way down these lines and everything, which I don't recall actually doing in this episode. I, I, I made the tracks bi-directional, so a train could enter either one in, in a specific direction to let them pass each other. But once you've actually set created several blocks along the length of the line, I could have half a dozen, a dozen trains running on this setup. You know, with the bi-directional sections of track along here like this. And they wouldn't face any problems. There'd be very minimal delays. And I mean, as I say, with, with the oil train especially, delays aren't a problem because the oil production is so low. If, if I start getting other trains taking oil to that station up top and have that one train feed it in, I mean, that, that's the beauty of the supply chain as well. I don't need to have all the trains that I end up creating for oil come down to this station that I'm sort of near at the minute, you know, the, the final final station, the final destination, with, only without the death. Um... I don't need them all coming there. I can have them go to other outlying stations, unload into them, and then have a single train bring all that down. Now, with, with other resources, like the iron and the stone that I'm trying to harvest at the minute, harvest, trying to mine, that wouldn't work so much because every time my train gets back to that station, my production levels are so high, that station will always be full. So I probably would have to have trains come down here. But at the same time, with what I'm doing, the demand is never going to be that high. So I won't need a lot of trains bringing that particular resource in. So it's, it's, it's little things that you can figure out. I mean, this, this junction this junction is beautiful, by the way. I, I love the way this junction works, especially when I get these. I, I, I'm going to use this space here, all the robots and flying into that I'm standing in. That's where the concrete is going to be produced. Okay, that is, that is my aim. The concrete is going to be produced there. But... You, as, as I said, I, I forget that I need the bricks. I don't need stone. I need stone bricks, which means I need furnaces. I forget that stage. I have it, the train bringing a shit ton of stone down here. Now, 
This, 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 this overly complicated. I mean, the, the thing is, right? The that junction that you saw me create. I mean, I, I need to work with that um, that belt. That junction you saw me create there looks more complicated than it is. But because trains, when they're on automatic, I mean, when you, when trains are on manual, they go in whichever direction. They, they, it's like when you're walking, you know, they go in whichever direction you press. But when they're on automatic rather than manual, they uh, they go down whichever track they need to. So as long as I make the signals appropriate, leading off it, the train will know which way to go. It looks like it should be ridiculously complicated. If you ever watched any of the videos on YouTube of trains coming in and out of, say, busy mainline stations, I mean, if you look like, for example, London stations. Some of those have really high traffic, and they've got very convoluted-looking uh, ways for the uh, what are they called the, the the track coming in and go the points. That's the word I'm looking for. The the points are the switch track if you're American. The the points look very very complicated, but they're really not. I mean, it's important that they work properly, obviously, especially in real life, but they're not as complicated as they look. It's hard to explain, but when you realise the actual simplicity of it, it seems so elegant. I mean, I try and stop there. So I, 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 I give up and decide to just sort of place it all manually. Because, I mean, it's not, not, not very difficult to uh, to create one of these little stations, even without a blueprint. But I I sort of... I, I use the inserters, the, the fast inserters for it. Oh, God, you, you can also hear I'm quite heavily under attack, quite regularly as well. One thing I do need to go do is, I mean, you, you can create a station that will only unload, you have one train with lots of cargo, right, lots of cargo trucks or whatever you call them, cargo wagons, and if, as long as you've got the right filters set up, the right filter f inserters set up, you, you can have each one, you know, you, you can have a train visit dozens of stations in if you wanted to. And have it unload and load specific things. That's what I love about this. I mean, th these inserters that you see down here at the minute, they will put anything into it. So you'll end up with, like, mixed cargo. But it wouldn't be difficult to have one train collect all of your railway goods and drop it off here. And have a station that processes each individual one. And then you can have robots flying in and taking it off to where it needs to be. Or you could have it unload onto conveyor belts. And it's just... I, I, just, I, just, I don't know if you appreciate the sheer scope, you know, and the potential it has. I mean, look, you see I've used the filter ones here. I, th I thought I hadn't, but apparently I had. So this is how little I remember. I mean, I recorded it last night, just before going to bed. I uh, realised this morning, after I converted it, I hadn't recorded any voice. So, you know, it's... it's it, I've forgotten exactly what I'm doing. You know, and at the minute we're about halfway through the video. I say about halfway. It's, it's only, I only recorded 45 minutes, because when I say it was late, I mean it was about half two in the morning. Now, you might be wondering what I'm doing up recording videos at half two in the morning. Yes, it's a weekend, but I have work today. But not until, well, today as I'm recording my voice, not today as I'm playing it. I'm working late, so, you know, I'm, 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 I'm up early so that I can, be, uh, as, I can sleep through the day. I hate sleeping through the day, because even at this time of year, you lose the daylight. I mean, I'm fortunate enough to work in an outdoor type job without actually being outdoors. You know, I'm outside, but I get a comfortable seat. But by the time I start work today, it'll be dark again. And I, I, I slept in until about halfway through the day, so, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. I don't like missing daylight. Because it, it feels like you've lost the entire day. I, I don't know what it is. You just, you just feel like you've lost the day, and I don't like losing the day. I don't. Now, as you can see, what I'm doing now is I'm I'm trying to lay down the conveyor belt so that... Well, what, what I'm doing is each of those filter inserters will be set up to a specific product. I mean, I know there's five of them, but some will be for iron, some will be for stone. And what I want them to do is, because of the way the uh, inserters put on the far side of the belt from them, what I want is for the produce to end up filling one belt and that, 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 the way I'm doing it here is one effective way of doing that. Because everything that's inserted on the on the belt that's going to the right will be fed onto the uh, belt one way and end up on the inside. Whereas everything on well, everything from the left three will end up being fed onto the right hand side. You see, you see, I figure out that I've done it wrong here shortly. Okay, this is not the final setup. 
But the way I set up the belts, it lets me control it like that. So I end up not wasting belt space. This turns out to be a problem because I haven't done the uh, furnaces yet. But there is room to put furnaces in there. And I will remedy that situation. But it's going to require me to do a lot of cleanup and probably have a couple of trains take stuff away. But that's fine as well. You know, that, that can be dealt with. Just trying to figure out my factory placement at this point. Factory assembly machine. I mean, I want a shit ton of concrete. Okay, I, I need a shit ton of concrete. I need a thousand, I think, to make this rocket silo. And that is our ultimate aim. Yeah, that, that is the aim of the game, get the rocket silo. So I need to get the water in there. You can see I'm rotating it to figure out the best way to get the water in there. Um, I also need to figure out the best way of... Uh, well, there, there, are, there are shortcuts and keys and whatnot that I, I don't know about yet. I do not know this game inside out. You know, beyond pointing and clicking, there's a lot I don't know. I know some shortcuts using shift and control, but other than that... And as you can see, I've figured out where I want that to be. Now, if I have the belt feed along a certain way... Well, that then allows me to have the outputs on one side and the inputs on the other. But you will notice that I soon realise the problem I have... ...is there isn't enough room for the piping. I know, right? I can have the inserters going along like this, whacking stuff in and then outputting on this side. But those solar panels are in the way. Those solar panels are in the way. I've got to realise it soon. Mind you, I don't, I don't always realise my mistakes, as those of you that watch me regularly will notice. I, I make mistakes and don't catch them immediately. I usually do within, well, usually not long after I've uh, played. Sometimes I catch them in the next episode or so, because I... I tend to binge create these. I didn't last night because I was up late, but I, I sit down and I binge play these games. I mean, I've been playing Factorio for a couple of weeks now, and I apologise if you've been wanting other videos. They will come, but just whilst I'm really into this game, I feel the content's going to be much better. If, if you're playing something you're into, you're going to create better content, all right? That is a fact. Whether or not people agree with me is irrelevant. I feel much happier doing it this way. I feel I'm, I'm, I'm creating more. Things are going better, I think. And I, I, I'm, I'm happy with the way this is working out. I'm loving playing Factorio, and I'm enjoying creating videos. There we go, I've realised that I've ballsed up. I think I've realised that I've ballsed up. Because the, the way the belt's set up at the minute, it's all going to end up on the same side. Um, there is an easy fix. I can't remember if I use these fix. I mean, I can see it now, and you can probably figure it out. If we just... Uh, there. If we have the belt go up there. Oh no, it's not going to... Oh, there we go, yeah, and it's, uh, that does it as well. I, f I forgot that does it, yeah. That'd work. Because the splitter will put the ones on the far side on the far side and the ones on the near side on the near side. So that's a clever way of doing it. An expensive way. I, I, I saw a way I could have done it just using the belts, but, you know, that, that works for me as well. That takes less space. That's, that's always a bonus. So I need to power this shit. Um... Yeah, that'll do. Go on, so I'll place it. There we are. Nice, nice. And then... See, that that, that does reach, doesn't it? That, that, that covers everything. I'm just figuring out whether or not that covers all that needs to be covered. And the problem you have is that not, they're not connected to anything. They're not. There you go. Now they are. Yeah. It's, uh... Oh yeah, and the, the signalling as well. The signalling is important. Can't have blocks if you don't have signals. I know the... Uh, I mean, it, all, all track is divided into blocks. Right? As far as I'm aware, every railway system in the world works on blocks, but how they implement the blocks is uh, different. I mean, these signals create fixed blocks, as in a block of track is always the same block of track. You can optimise your usage of your track in real-world applications. If you make the blocks... Rather dependent on the track, dependent on the position of trains. Well, that placement didn't go that well. Um, I mean, if, if, if you assume... Right. A block is this point between the last signal and the next signal, okay? And the train could be anywhere on that block. Which means, uh, say you've got a length of track two miles long, right? And each block is one mile long, so you've got two blocks there. You can fit two trains in along that length of track, okay? But those of you that realise that if the train is always at the front of the block, where the signal is, and you put another train at the back, at the front of the next block, 
There's room along that length, two mile length of track to actually at some points have three blocks. So if you only have two blocks on there all the time, you're wasting space. Yeah, see what I'm getting at. Um, but you could in effect have three blocks on there if you make the blocks rolling. And the way you do that is you you have it so that the signals are actually incorporated into the train itself. If the train marks, if the front of the train marks the start of a new block, yeah, and you say that no train can enter anywhere within one mile behind the train, then you can incorporate more blocks onto it and your trains can go faster because the blocks move with the trains and you can fit more trains on the same length of track. You see what I mean? I mean, a, a, a train, on, on that two mile length of track, a train can be anywhere up to a mile ahead of that and its block will still extend onto that two miles. So say you've got that two mile, uh, mile length of track and there's a train two and a half miles away from where you first enter that track. That train's block, if, if the train marks the start of the block, is going to extend half a mile into the last mile of that track. Which means you could then have another train a mile behind that, another train a mile behind that, and you're optimising, you're maximising the use of your track. Make sense? Now, if, if there was a way to do that in Factorio, I don't think the trains go that fast. It's not necessary on slower tracks because issues like that don't crop up. But if you've got a train doing 200, 300, 400 kilometres an hour, as trains in the real world are capable, it becomes more of an issue. Because stopping distances become so great. Wow, that's a lot of aliens. I mean, I know I'm talking about trains a lot, but... You know, if, if you've got a train with a two-mile stopping distance, you need to create your blocks longer so that a train has the chance to stop when it enters a new block before reaching the next signal and entering a block that's occupied. That's where the problem comes in. But if you have two trains and the trains mark the start of the block, the trains can slow down at the same time, never close the distance between each other, and never enter the next train's block. It, it, it's hard to explain without a visual representation of it, but I'm hoping what I'm saying is making sense. I mean, it's, it's just, when, when you think about it, the, the, the way that they go about implementing these things is genius, and I'm still crashing into everything. It's, it's just, I, I love the solutions they come up with. I just love it, right, and there we go. So we've got some basic signalling going on. Now, I realise that, I, I be, being British, I, I like to put it so that anything going in any direction runs on the left, because that's, that's just our road convention. And that's, that's also the way it often works on railway lines. But I realise there I put the tracks too close together, so I have to have them going the other way. You know, trains going on the right. There, look, I can do it now. So the train will come down on the left and go up on the left. So whichever way the train's going, it's always on the left-hand track, apart from on that one stretch track. But it doesn't matter with trains, because they're always going to be on the rails. Okay? So it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter if you swap between going on left and right. I mean, it would if you're on roads because there's other things to consider. But this is the beauty of railway lines. Now, this is not the best way to do this. Okay, I'm just getting it mapped out and I'm crashing into everything again. I'm just trying to get it mapped out in my head before I get the train running. You just, you, I, I just need to figure these things out. And sometimes the best way to do it is in the implementation. Your trial and error is sometimes the best way to see if something works. Okay? You can hypothesize, you can theorize all you want. I shouldn't use theorize like that because a theory is only a theory if it actually works. A theory is a hypothesis put into action. Describing an actual functional way of resolving an issue. Kind of. I mean, in science, a theory is only a theory when the weight of evidence supports it. If it doesn't work, it's not a theory. So, you know, you can hypothesise in this all you want, but sometimes just placing it is the only way to achieve what you want. Now, it occurs to me that this does need properly defending as well, and I don't think I did that. I should go back and collect a shit ton of lasers to get that sorted. Um, but yeah, look, coal production's working, which means I can get my train fueled. And, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's what these stations are about as much as unloading the cargo, is ensuring that the trains are always fueled. You don't want them running out halfway down the line and blocking the track. Because that'd just be awful. You know, that'd, be, that'd be horrific. Horrendous. Yeah, this is the station that I need to sort. Um, but, you know, it, 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 we'll see how it all works out. There we go. There we go. 
I'm not sure filters were the best way to do this. But, you know. I mean, the, the belt I put on it, I, I can't remember how I go about doing the belt. I mean, if I only have the stone going to those top three and the iron going to the bottom three, that's fine. Now, that will work. Um... If I, if I ended up, yeah, I, th I think I ended up using the same belt for the whole thing, which means that I'm wasting belt because anything gets down to where that iron is. You know, any, any stone gets down there, it's going to be left there indefinitely, isn't it? Yeah, those were the wrong inserts to use. I'll have to remember that, because I, I don't know, I, c I can't recall if I resolved that issue or not. It's weird, I only recorded it last night. If I, as I'm doing this voiceover, I recorded it less than 12 hours ago. And I just cannot remember it. I mean, that, that, that's how bad my memory can be. Uh, right, I want the stone coming in on one side. And then I want the iron coming in on another. Like that. Yeah, see, see, see. Oh, saving. See how the uh, stone goes all the way down? I mean, it's not wasting an awful lot. But it is wasting some. And I can... Ah, oh, no, you see, this, the filters serve a purpose. They ensure that... The top storage crates will only ever be used for iron, and the bottom ones will no will only be used. So the bottom ones will only be used for iron. The only way to do it would be to have two separate belts bringing the uh, stuff in, wouldn't it? Nah, we we'll leave it as it is because the, the, the filters are there for a purpose. Okay, the, those filters ensure that there is always iron and always stone. If I just had filters that can pick up anything, put anything in, you might end up just with all stone in them. Because stone fire outstrips the production of iron, so it's going to fill those gaps first. Because there's, there's got, always going to be a strong supply of it. Whereas if I ever run out of iron, I could end up having none for my train, and then my train would never never move, because it would never be full. It would just be full of stone. That would be a problem. Oh well. I'll, I'll, I'll leave that well enough alone. I, I see now why I did that. I must have realised at the time I, that was a happy accident. There you go. Crashing into trees. I'm not like this when I actually drive, which is fortunate, because my living is driving. And if that was how I approached driving, I don't think I'd be employed very long. I don't. Oop, crash into that. I think I was dodging, trying to hit the gates. There we go. Didn't quite work. Right, and we're back down here as well. Can we fix this? What am I doing? Don't need the stone, okay. Realise... Oh, yeah, because I'm not producing any more track, am I? Yes, I think this is where I... Uh Come to realise that I need to achieve stuff. Uh, what am I doing? I'm just standing around waiting for resources to recruit. Oh, yes, the belts. The belts. Let there be belts. Yeah. Building robots. I don't have too many logistics robots. I mean, it does affect the power. You know? That can be a problem, but... See, I, I don't understand in this. I mean, I, I haven't looked that far ahead. Can you get fusion power? I mean, you get a small fusion reactor that you use on yourself. If I could use them instead of solar panels or coal power, that'd be great. Huh. So, I mean, the, the, the beautiful thing about fusion power is you could, in theory, produce no, no pollution. I mean, fusion's just turning hydrogen into helium. Oh, well, more specifically, it's turning uh, lighter nuclei into heavier nuclei. You can do it with any element, it's just easier. You know, the easiest one is hydrogen into helium. It it's a lot more complicated when you start trying to produce heavier things. Um, and all you would need is water, because I mean, water has all the hydrogen you would need. It also has all the oxygen, you could just burn it again. Solar power, I mean... To, to meet all the energy needs of uh, the human race, you could do it with solar power, but it'd require an area twice the size of the United Kingdom. That's a lot of solar power. Now, you could, you obviously, you'd have to spread that around the world, and you'd have to put it in the places to get the most solar power. So we're talking near the equator, and unfortunately, traditionally, the equatorial regions are less politically stable, which obviously makes that infeasible. You could put some in the southern US, some in Europe, and some in Australia, but then, obviously, countries would have monopolies on power, and no one's going to go for that. But you could use solar power to electrolyze water, separate it off into hydrogen and oxygen, and then burn that to produce power. 
Now, you're not getting out more than you're putting in. Because, obviously, you can't do that in physics. You know, physics prevents you from being able to do that. It's just a question of how energy efficient getting the fuel in the first place is. Which is why fossil fuels are so great. You get far more energy out of it because it's so easy in terms of energy usage to get at it. You, know, you get out more than you invest in extracting it. With burning hydrogen, that's why you would want to use solar power. Because if you were using the energy that you burned from the hydrogen, you would eventually run out of power. You know? But if you want a clean way of getting energy in there, you obviously don't want to be burning fossil fuels to do it. The whole point is you want a clean system. Now that is great, but if you could then extract the... Um, the hydrogen and the oxygen that way, and you could fuse the hydrogen. That would produce more than enough energy. I mean, fusing hydrogen into helium produces so much energy. So much. I, I just cannot, in comparison to burning hydrogen, I just cannot tell you how much more. These, these nuclear reactions generate so much more power than the chemical ones that you could use the nuclear ones to fuel the chemical ones. To, you know, you could use hydrogen fusion to produce the energy that gives you the free hydrogen in the first place, and that would keep feeding itself. Because of the way the laws of physics work, you're not getting out more than you're putting in still. You know? You're just... your different methods of doing the... En of converting the energy. It, it, it's... What am I talking about, anyway? Why am I talking about this? It, it, it's like the holy grail of energy production, unfortunately, is just so difficult. So, so difficult. I mean, in theory, you could also use the oxygen and fuse that into heavier elements. That happens in stars. It happens in the big, supermassive stars, and sometimes it only happens during supernova. You know. But the ultimate end game for fusion is iron. Now, iron is one of the most radioactively stable elements. If I think it is the most stable, isn't it? Is, is the point on the periodic table where fission of the heavier elements tends towards iron and fusion of the lighter elements tends towards iron. The only thing I think that's more stable than iron is uh, helium, but that's to do with its quantum properties in, in the nucleus. It's just so well balanced. Which is why alpha particles are a thing, funnily enough, but I'm not going to give you a physics lesson. It's, it's just, if I could have a fusion reactor in this game, all you would need is a water source and maybe a solar thing to get it all going. Just, you know, that that, that, that would be great, because then I could have a completely clean thing, and we wouldn't have all this pollution that you can currently see on the map. And that'd be nice. Less pollution would mean I'm less likely to get attacked, surely. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, we're testing out the train. Seeing if it goes where we want it to. It seems to work. There we go. And other than the fact that I've balls up and I'm having raw stone instead of stone brick delivered, this system works. I don't notice that it's not working as intended, but I will, I will, I will, you know. And, uh, well, you know, that's that, that's that's pretty much it. That, that's me accomplishing what I want to, so... You know, it's, it's splendid. I mean, that isn't producing at the minute. I can see that it requires water, and I need to fix that issue. But that's, that's easily done as well. Easily done. Now, I could hook all them up, but then I'd have no room for the inserters. If you if you see, if I, if I put piping all the way across the top of that, because of the way I've spaced it all, there would be no room for the inserters. I'd have to move the belt out and use long handled inserters and shit. And that's, that's just not the way I want to do things. It's just not. So you know, we 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 will we will we will come back to that. Um, the way I go about solving it is that I have the pipe go under the belt, because that leaves the gaps for inserting it. But as you can see, the solar panels are in the way. The solar panels are in the way, and I don't have enough pipe. Often a problem I'm noticing. I don't have too much pipe, right? And there we go, like that. But then these solar panels are obviously very much in the way, so I just have to get rid of them. There's no two ways around that. Not a huge loss. I can always put them down elsewhere. But then just doing that fixes that problem. And then we get the water hooked up. And once the water's hooked up, that's it. That's me done for the uh, moment. 
you know, it's, 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 I love that when stuff's out of range now, because I've got the robots, I can just set them on the problem. I do, I do, I do. I do who? Come on, Sval. You, you can get this figured out. There we are. Just there. And then there and there. And that'll do. I just need the uh, piping. Regular piping. Don't need any more of them, but I realise I can use that there. Come on. There, there. And there's the water hooked up. That'll do, guys. That will do. That, that That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Just the inserters to place. And the system there is essentially functional. I just need to get the stone sorted into stone brick. That will suffice. That will suffice. If you enjoy my efforts to be vaguely entertaining, you can now support me on Patreon. A dollar, a pound, a yen, a euro, whatever you've got, whatever you can spare, all helps. Over a million fed. Thank you for watching, and ta -ra.